Hello guys and welcome back to Dark Horse FM and today we're going to be looking at a high pressing possession based lower league tactic. As you can see here, I'm using Hereford in the Vanarama National League North. So, so far I think Hereford was expected to finish in 14th. I know it has, that's, that dynamic has probably changed now because we've gotten, a, um, we've gotten so many good results recently. So the prediction might change as I'm going to check it right now. But looking at the season preview, we can see that here for okay, now I predicted to finish second, but as at the start of the season, we're predicted to finish 14th in the league. And here for are not really the, the best side in the Van Rama National League, but this tactic up worked an absolute treat for them. Disclaimer when I started using this tactic, here for didn't have that many players. In fact, I got sacked from my previous club that was Bath in Van Rama National League South, and then I got employed by by that by Hereford then I now decided to try out this new tactic that I created and then so far so good it's been working quite well and then we've, we've we even have our media prediction for the position we're supposed to finish to it has actually been changed from finishing 14th to second so I'm going to give you just a little hint how the tactic is set up and then we'll get through it in a second so guys, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe so you can get notifications when new videos come out. I normally make videos like this, especially for lower league clubs or sub top teams that are not expected to win the league all the time. Those are the teams I enjoy using in Football Manager and those are the teams I enjoy creating tactics for, the team that nobody's actually thinking about. So that's what I do. And right now I created an outstanding tactic for lower league saves so you can actually use this tactic. Remember to hit the like button as well. If you enjoyed this video, remember to stick around. I'm going to show you the description of how the tactic works in a bit. So off the bat, you can see that from our medical center right here on the far right, you can see how many players have in are uh, at risk of getting injured. So it means this tactic is actually very, very demanding. So I'm going to look at it real quick. Or before, this is basically how the tactic is set up. It's a 4-1-4-1. DM tactic. I nicknamed it Darren because it's an FM16. It's a watered down version of the Darren devastating tactic, but for the lower league. So I recreated this tactic on FM21 and on FM22 as well. The FM21 version, well, I did the Darren devastating. You can also check that video out and also the tactic on FM Scout. The FM21 version of the original tactic is there. But the lower league version, I had to water down this tactic for lower leagues, although I kept the false nine. And then looking at the tactic results, we can see from the competition so far, I'm just going to run into our schedule. We can see that we've won the friendlies were pretty straightforward. We beat teams like Harrogate and Stevenage. I think Stevenage is in League 1 or League 2. They're in League 2 where we managed to walk past Stevenage. We beat the other two teams in friendlies, but I don't really count those. Looking at the league results from the Van Rama North, we went our first 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 games, 11, 12, 13, first of all, so most of our games we went, we went a great deal of, went a long time without conceding. So that's what really stood out for me, how although the, the tactic is very positive and attacking, the, the emphasis is on playing on the front foot, they're actually very solid, solid defensively. So we had the odd defeat here and there, just a 1-0, there's 1-0 here, 2-1, 1-0. And then we, we lost 2-0 to Brackley, and that's the standard result. And then ever since, okay, there's Grimsby as well in the FA Cup, but Grim, Grimsby are a better team than Hereford. So I kind of was happy about losing to Grimsby because that way we can focus on the league. But start, um, I don't know, it's actually a good tactic, and I'm going to show you the tactic description. We'll go through the player roles and then the team instructions as well to see how the tactic is set up. And I also attached set pieces to this, so that helps the tactic as well. You can check it out. Looking at the team stats, we can see even though AFC Telford has the most amount of goals, the fewest shots conceded is for Hereford. Hereford is dominant in most areas, so the tactic actually works in that aspect. It's the possession-based tactic, so we have the highest amount of possession. And since we have the ball, we concede less goals. The f we also have the most dribbles made. The tactic is actually very positive and front-moving. We don't concede a lot of goals, so clean sheets were right up there. The pass completion as well is good and then most tackles won. Um, it's awkward because I can't see where here for there are 12 so we don't really tackle the opposition that much. There's, a, there's an easy way of getting the ball back that doesn't involve high amount of tackling or getting stuck in. So then for the tactic, just off the bat we can see is a 4-4, is a 4-1-4-1 like I explained before. 
and then the the full backs the two full backs are on attack the central defender they are both on defend duty these are the instructions for the full back on attack and is the identical instructions for the full back on the left for attack both central defenders have identical instructions these are the instructions the half back on the other hand has just two instructions the idea is these two full backs and the wing backs are actually are obviously going to overload the flanks and then since the tactic is quite narrow the opposition is going to try to close down the two full backs and the wing back and the two wingers that are coming in from the flanks leaving room for the two central defense two central midfielders that are also on attack duty the central midfielder on the left is on attack duty the attacking the advanced playmaker on the right normally this role for the main darren tactics is actually central midfielder on attack but for this lower league tactic i opted for an advanced playmaker on attack as well just like darren did in fm16 so it's actually to add more creativity to the side so you can see that this player now has to take more risks for advanced playmaker and then these are instructions the most difficult role to feel in this tactic is the false nine and most of the time my players have actually begged and suggested that i should switch this from the false nine to maybe a pressing forward or an advanced forward or a poacher in any way you can do that if you want but for me and the way it has worked is that this false nine is actually going to drop deeper into the areas here and then allowing the central attacking midfielder and the advanced playmaker to get forward the wingers as well so if he drops deep the central the two central defenders might choose to follow him if they don't they can stay and then he's also, he's just going to find an easy an easy access to score but if they follow him then that just creates room for all the other players to run into so going into the team instructions then when out of possession the team is asked to have a higher line of engagement and press the opposition a bit more have the higher the slightly higher defensive line as well not much higher just one up one notch they also asked to type to mark the position tightly and then get stuck in prevent short goalkeeper distribution as well i'm going to explain something about marking in the opposition instructions too when you go into transition the team is asked to counter press and counter and the goalkeeper i kid you not is asked to slow pace down this way he's supposed to distribute the ball roll it out to the full backs or the center backs and as i have noticed even though i've set it to distribute to the full backs the goalkeeper still sometimes distribute the ball to the center backs regardless going into the in possession phase now the attacking width is quite narrow and the team has been asked to pass into space as well the also they've also been asked to play the ball through the middle that's because of the two the central attacking midfielder and the advanced playmaker that are in the middle of the field the halfback is not going to get forward as much but the two central midfielders are going to get forward and then the wingers as well so that allows playing through the middle allows you actually tear the opposition to open the opposition from the middle area a crossing is also something you have to keep an eye on you can set your crossing to mixed crosses but since my players are not that tall i opted for loop crosses in this position and then walk the ball into the box option is also turned on but in cases where you find it hard to score goals or your teams your team is wasting a lot of time on the ball you can turn this option off and then turn on hit early crosses it works as well if you have set pieces turned on like i have for this tactic i actually attach some set pieces to it you can play for set pieces but right now it's blank so that's not really necessary the team's passing directness is shorter and then the tempo is quite high if you also notice that you're giving the ball away too often you can reduce the tempo as well and if you notice that your position is defending really well and as you're trying to break them down from the middle you can stretch the pitch and go for a wider wider attacking width but not taking away the play through the middle your focus play is still going to be through the middle just going to be wider that way you can stretch the pitch a bit and push the defenders out wide which will create room for your central midfielders that are coming in from middle from the middle to actually get a chance at goal the creative freedom is also expressive and then the team is also asked to run at defense i attached some set pieces to the tactic as well you can see this is how the defensive set piece is set up on the left on the right hand side and then this is how it's set up on the right hand side it's pretty simple you can replicate it or you can download the tactic yourself and then try it out and see how it works out for you the attacking corner is also set to the Beowulf tactic as I downloaded this how it is set up on the left hand side and it's set up on the right now if you have this this set piece all set up you need to actually have your players in the right positions now there's a defender here is a six foot two center half is attacking the near post and then I have another center half attacking the lurking around the near post as well so we can see that this center half is much taller so I can have him here if he was if this player was quite tall i might have swapped both players but since he's already tall enough i can have him in this role what i normally do when i'm attaching when i'm attacking set when i'm attaching wow what i normally do when i'm attaching set pieces to tactic is to always create two or three 
and then to have the second set piece this set piece is completely blank I can do whatever I want with this set piece and it gives me creativity above or more control over my set pieces that way if I notice that something isn't working in the game I can come into this set piece and actually tweak it to suit the opposition tact the opposition set up in their own defensive set pieces that way I have some some sort of creative control over my set pieces in this routine I think the throwings are set up the same way left and right this is the defensive throw and then the attacking throwing is the Beowulf tactic as well and also for throwings I tend to have another one open so I can have some creative control over my set pieces over my long throws I can't just always have all my throwings to be long throws as much as they work in the game I also sometimes want chances to be created from other other opportunities by just throwing a short throwing to another player so I have another to just create another set piece there and I'm going to save the tactic so you can download it it's going to be the link in the description below you can download the tactic for yourself and then test it out and see how it works out for you so guys that's a summary of the lower league tactic that I've created so far and then you can download it for yourself like I mentioned you can you can get the link from the description below I've attached it to the description to the video description below you can get the link from there as well and then you can see you can see the results we've had so far and currently we are after 22 games in the Vanarama National League North we're currently first and I think we've played a lot of difficult games and then since we've been knocked out of the cup it's probably um I know it's still far fetched from now but we're still going to get promoted anyway that's the objective for Hereford so using this tactic you can actually try for yourself and see how it works we don't well we do lose a couple but just by the odd goal as well so let me know how the tactic works out for you the link is in the description you can download it for yourself and test it out with your teams i'm going to create a a similar tactic but for bigger teams actually allow or to factor in players with better technical abilities because currently this tactic only would only work effectively for teams that are in the lower leagues because you can see there's a winger there's a central midfielder and there's an advanced playmaker fullback fullback so they're all traditional roles that you can actually find players easily in the lower league except for the false nine the striker that is in this position so he is the only role that you might actually have trouble finding but to my knowledge what has worked for me so far while i when i'm playing with the false nine in the lower league is that you can find a player that has good passing attributes that helps in the lower league he is eight i think having passing attribute of eight has helped us so far a one banjay he to be fair the, my, my other strikers don't have passing range of eight and then there's my main striker benny ashley seal he has passing of eight as well so you can see that players that have good passing actually fill into the false nine row. although they're going to complain a lot that you're actually using them in their wrong position but that doesn't mind it doesn't matter you can try using him as a pressing forward as well if it's going to work out for you in your tweak for the tactic but so far so good that's how it's set up you can use like i said you can download the tactic for yourself and see how it works it's a very it's a demanding tactic as well so you're going to need to have players more than one player in each position just to play and then consider that you're using a lower league team if you are you'd see that fullbacks on attack wingers on attack in their traditional positions would be quite easy to find in the lower league so it's just to have two or three players in in the same role so they can play back to back to back and then you don't have to have as many injuries like i have in my own team so that's it guys thanks for watching remember to hit the like button and to also subscribe to the channel i'll get back to you with the next video for the elite tactic that is meant for bigger teams that is meant for teams with more technical players i'll try and create that video real soon and i'll get back to you guys see you in the next video